Families of Functions and Six Transformations, a complete online grade 7 through 12 free modular course with over 300 videos and over 400 examples. This is from UAlpha Theta 2021. Teachers, but students can watch it also. Hi, my name is Tom Reardon, math teacher from Ohio. At Fitch High School for 35 years, at Youngstown State for 40 years, and for the past 12 years I've been a senior math advisor uh, for Texas Instruments. So welcome. So again, this is a complete modular course, meaning you only need to use what you need to do, okay? Uh, so there's 300 plus videos, you may only need one or two or 20, okay? You just pick and choose the ones you need. Starting off with a quote, I'm convinced that students can learn in more ways than I know how to teach. This comes from Stephen Reinhardt uh, from an article from NCTM Math Teacher a few years ago. Families of Functions, um, Transformation Graphing Modular Unit. Again, only use what you need. This was created for remote learning, to complement in-class learning, flip classroom, independent study and review is needed. So it covers lots of bases. How to graph the 13 parent functions and why they're shaped the way they are. And then there's also videos on how to graph the parent functions quickly, like a quick review or a reminder. Why the following transformations affect these parent functions and how to graph them quickly using dances or tables. We're going to have vertical shifts, horizontal shifts, opposites of functions, vertical stretch and shrink or dilations, horizontal compressions or expansions. We covered all of the bases here. All materials are free and modular. Uh, can use as an online course, a review, flip classroom, augment what you're doing in your classroom. And it's independent of whatever graphing technology you are using. It works on with TI-84, TI-Inspire, whatever, anything else. Our 13 parent functions plus one, a generic created piecewise function. By the way, pause any time as needed. Uh, I'm assuming you'll pause in case I'm going too quickly, okay, but hopefully all your favorites are there. We did, we do have a slope and linear relations model. Uh, coming soon, sine, cosine, and their transformations, they're going to be posted to the website soon, definitely before school starts in August. Quick thank yous to the teachers who have helped with this project. Uh, pause if you need to, see if there's anybody there you recognize their name, but uh, again, I appreciate their help in, in evaluating and field testing with their students. Very different presentation from what I normally do. I've spent over 500 hours creating these materials to help you and your students teach or learn how to graph the parent functions and their transformations. So the mathematics and the pedagogy are there. And I'll be showing you what materials are available and how to access these materials by you and your students. They're meant to be how a teacher would teach these concepts, allowing the students to pause and try ideas. That's, the, that's the kind of the goal. So the first parent function, list of parent functions, P, that's stand for parent function. I just have a code here. Series of 12 videos of length five to nine minutes each. This is as if they've never seen them before. Okay, never seen them before. Discusses key terms like intercepts, asymptotes, includes domain and range, and it were applicable, a practical application of the parent function. Uh, the numbers are there for easy, easy reference. Again, length five to nine minutes each, the parent functions. So instead of playing a video for you, which I think would be kind of me. I'm going to show you the slides that were used to create the videos, kind of in a fast forward. They were created kind of almost like a flip book or a cartoon where you just keep flipping and, and changing and adding to the slides. Um, and then plus you can play any videos you want to see uh, what's going on after we're finished. So I'm going to show you 01P. How to graph y equals x squared, part of the family of functions series. I point out that you will need graph paper for this. So we start off with a grid, y equals x squared. We'll go start with a table. And these are our, be our big seven values that we usually like to use when we graph our parent functions. So three squared is nine, and, and I would tell the students to pause and complete the table. So they would pause the video, hopefully, and complete the table, and then return. And these are the values for this one, and then here. And uh, so we'll plot three comma nine, two, four, 
1, 1, and the origin. And then on the other side of the y-axis, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4, and negative 3, 9. And I'm hoping that they'll notice that this is something called symmetry. And you can see it in the graph. You can see it in the table. So the points are symmetric about the y-axis, or the line x equals 0. Students will sometimes ask, is this a V shape? And that's a good question. So we'll say, let's put in two more values for X. So we need to square one half, and a half times a half is a fourth, which is a surprise to some of our students. And negative one half, the quantity squared, also is one fourth. So we'll plot those points over a half and up a quarter, and left negative one half and up a quarter. And when we go to connect them, you can see, no, it's not a V shape, it's more of a U shape more rounded, so when we connect the points, we get this shape called a parabola. Pause any time as needed. Some terminology. This is the vertex at the origin, the bottom so-called so of the, of the U-shaped curve. And we also have this mirror line, or again, this axis of symmetry. And you can, again, see that here. So when we talk about the parabola dance, we mean we start at the origins, because zero squared is zero. And then we go from that vertex, right one up one, because one squared is one, right two up four, two squared is four, and right three up nine, three squared is nine. We can either use symmetry to get the other points, or left one up one, left two up four, left three up nine, okay? Connect the points, and there is our beautiful parabola. Again, notice the symmetry about the y-axis. Domain and range, we'd want to talk about that. So we have a graph and table here, and you can see that the domain, if we go along the x-axis, all these values have something above them or on them at the origin. So the domain is all real numbers, and we write that with a script R. The range starts at zero and everything greater than that, so it's real numbers greater than or equal to zero, and that's the way we write that in set notation. Where can you see parabolas in the world? Well, right here at World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C. Now, I did go a lot faster than I do on the video. There's ample time for pauses, but I just want to give you a lot of ideas in the 30 minutes that I have. So we have quick graphs of the parent functions, meaning the students have already been taught this. They may need a quick review, and, it's, and they are quick. They're one to two minutes each. That's the whole idea is how to graph the parent function quickly. So we're going to show 0, 3, Q. And 0, 3, Q is how to graph y equals the square root of x, a review on how to graph that. A reminder that you do need grid paper. So we're going to graph y equals the square root of x using what we call the radical dance. So we start with the initial point at the origin, 0, 0, because the square root of 0 is 0. And from there, we go right 1, up 1, because the square root of 1 is 1. But then we go right 4, up 2, because the square root of 4 is 2. And right 9, up 3, because the square root of 9 is 3. If we had room, we'd go right 16, up 4, but we don't have room for that. So we have four points. We can go ahead and connect those points. And there is our half a parabola going sideways. And again, quick. There are videos of the six transformations, and they're explained. The vertical shifts, horizontal shifts, dilations, uh, f of the opposite of x to see if a function's odd, even, or neither, opposite of a function, and horizontal compressions and expansions. And then we also have combinations of those. Those are 8 to 20 minutes each. Uh, they show how to graph that particular transformation. And here's some here's examples of what we mean by these particular uh, transformations. Each video should be viewed before doing any specific transformation. So if you're going to be doing a horizontal transformation shift, you better be watch this video first to show generically how that's accomplished. So there's a six videos, eight to 20 minutes. These are what they look like. They're on each parent function page so that if you need a quick review, they're right there. So let's go ahead and 
investigate f of the quantity x minus h with different functions and generalize. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. We'll do the quick example 0 to hb. Quick graph y equals the absolute value of the quantity x minus 6 by hand. We show it two different ways in the graph paper. So the first way is with what we call the absolute value dance. Normally we start at the origin, but because of the minus 6 inside the function, we need to shift each point to the right 6 units, and that was explained in the horizontal transformations generalization videos. So we're going to start instead of 0, 0 to the right 6, 0, so we'll plot that point. And from this point, we do the absolute value dance. And if you know what the V dance looks like, that is you go right 1, up 1, because the absolute value of 1 is 1. Right 2 up 2, absolute value of 2 is 2, right 3 up 3, left 1 up 1, absolute value of negative 1 is 1, left 2 up 2, left 3 up 3. Got 7 points real quickly. Uh, we connect the points to that absolute value V. And we do like to compare it to the parent function and show that going from blue to green, each point is shifted to the right 6 units. Not just these points, but every single point. Second way, if you don't like that way, is using a table. So this is our table of five values on our absolute value v, y equals the absolute value of x, parent function. We create a second table. And what we do, need to do is add 6 to each of the x coordinates because of that minus 6 inside the uh, function. So 2 plus 6 is 8. Nothing happens to the y coordinates here, so we keep the y coordinates the same. So 8, 2 is, is one of our points, so we'll plot that. 1 plus 6 is 7. Keep the y coordinates the same, 7, 1. Again, I'm going much faster than the video does, and the students have a chance to pause. 0 plus 6, 6, 0. Uh, negative 1 plus 6, 5, 1. And negative 2 plus 6, 4, 2. So we have enough points to see what the outline is, connect the points to that absolute value v, and again, compare it to the parent function. We always, at the end of them, have a now you try one. We want to make sure the students can have a, like a self-assessment. So we ask them to graph this, either method or both, for the practice. Pause to do this, resume when you're finished to check, and we hope the students actually do that. So we show the graph here. We don't do a whole lot of explanation. We want to keep the videos as sh short as possible, but we do indicate this is right 3 from the normal absolute value. Now, unfortunately, we don't have time for some of the transformations, such as the opposites of functions, vertical dilations, odd, even, or neither functions, but I assure you they are included. We do have some times for what we call combinations of transformations. And we have three levels of combinations of transformations for each of the 13 parent functions. There's what we call a simple, which we designate by the letter A, moderate and complex. And here are examples of what we mean by simple. Those are two different um, combi trans or, um, transformations happening there. This one has a three with the opposite sign. Or, and this one has almost everything going on with it. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at one called 08CA. Quick, graph y equals 1 half raised to the quantity x minus 2 power plus 1 by hand, two different ways. First way will be to decide what the parent function is and its shape. And so we can see that the parent function is y equals the quantity of 1 half raised to the x. And we know it's this shape, which I call an easy chair facing that direction. I call it facing the other way because we usually do 2 to the x. So this is a exponential decay as, as opposed to exponential growth. We need to identify the parameters. Uh, those are values in the expression that affect the graph. So in this case, there's a minus 2 and a plus 1, and they affect the graph differently. So the plus 1 shifts all points up 1, including the asymptote. So the asymptote used to be the x-axis, y equals 0. Now it's shifted up to y equals 1 including the origin, and that's going to be our reference point. The minus 2 in the exponent shifts each point to the right two units, also including the origin. 
So the new origin, kind of our, our, our basic point to start from, is going to be the right two and up one, so at two comma one. So I'll plot that in orange for origin, and that's going to be like my reference point to graph. So points will be plotted relative to this new origin. So our one half to the x dance, from here I will go right zero up one because one half the quantity raised to the zero power is one. Then it's going to be right one up a half because one half to the first power is a half. Right two up a quarter. Then left one up two because one half raised to the negative one is the reciprocal of a half, which is two and left two up four. One half raised to the negative two goes to two, to the positive two, which is four. And those five points, we can connect them and use that asymptote there as a boundary line. Comparing it to the parent function, we can see that it's been shifted um, in two different directions. Second way, using a table. So we again start off with five key points from our parent function, y equals one-half to the x. Here's our green function here. And again, identifying the parameters, the minus two in the exponent shifts each point to the right two, which means we add two to each x-coordinate. So two plus two is going to be four. Now the other one's going to affect the y values. So we're just going to do the x values now. We'll take care of all of those. So 1 plus 2 is 3, 0 plus 2, and so on. The plus 1 adds 1 to each y value. And so 1 fourth plus 1 is 5 fourths. You just think of 1 fourth plus 4 fourths is 5 fourths. 1 half plus 1 is 1 and a half or 3 halves. So we'll plot the 3 comma 3 halves. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2, 2. 2 plus 1 is 3, 1, 3. And 4 plus 1 is 5, 0, 5. And so we've got those values there. We need to draw the asymptote, and we can see that the asymptote is going to be at y equals 1, both graphically and from this plus 1 here, shifting that asymptote up one unit. And connect the points to show the easy chair exponential decay compared to the parent function. Now you try one, graph this one, use either method or both for the practice, and press pause to do so, and then resume when you're finished. So this one, since it's a lot more complicated, we show the parent function, we show the, the graph we want, we also show the table of the parent function values and the table of the one we want to do, so students can really check their work there. So let's look at how to get all these materials in a list of all the equations and graphs. So here is a shortcut on how to get to that website, um, lowercase bit.ly forward slash lowercase f-o-f capital T-i, and that stands for Family of Functions Texas Instruments. And this is the landing page that you'll land there. Um, this helps to deepen understand how to graph families of functions. Um, and right here, this is the most essential thing I can get to you. If you can get these to your teachers and your students, let them decide if they want to use them. But this is a list of all the videos, all the examples, uh, links to them, all in one place. This is what I call essential. And I'm serious. This PDF is essential. And I'll point out how to get there. I'll show you what it is and how to get it. So there's the parent functions, uh, usually have this equal sign for the parent functions, a clock there for quick, that, the icon there, and these are the different transformations, just kind of point them out, you've heard me say them many times already, and then combining more than one transformation. So again, these are six of our uh, parent functions, you click on there and it takes you to that particular family. These are another six right here. I can pause if you need to. Greatest integer and then the piece, a generic piecewise. We included that because of SAT and ACT. Uh, like to ha have those piecewise functions so that students are on the level playing field never have graphed that function before and how to transform it. 
So what if we clicked on quadratic? All right, so we would go there and it would look like this and say, if you click here, we'll show you how to graph the parent function from scratch as if you've never done it before, or you can click the equal sign. You can click the clock to get the quick parent function. Uh, you can download graph paper if you need to, a PDF. Uh, these, again, are the six, transform or six transformations in general. They're on each parent function. So you say, oh, I need a refresher on you know, horizontal dilations or something like that. And then at the bottom are the each transformation. And you can see you can scroll left and right through these. And so each parent function has 15 videos, a how-to, a quick, and then 13 transformations, including um, several complex combinations. So I'd like you to go to the website and see it, okay? Um, but I'm going to hold off on doing that now, or unless you want to pause and go there. But I'll just kind of talk you through some other things here. So let's go ahead and look at this uh, quick reference guide. What does this look like? So the first page uh, is a table of contents and it lists the uh, parent functions and how to get to them. And then also at the bottom of that page are the uh, six transformations. Now, you'll notice that there's two links for each video. They are the same video. They have two different links. Um, this one is the YouTube name they give them. But we also created bit.ly ones that all start off with the same letters, bit.ly, TI, 21 for 2021, FOF for families of functions. And then whatever the code is for that particular video is the last set of letters. So if you want to tell your students do the V and D videos, all they got to do is know the first letters and they can type it in if they wanted to or give them this uh, document and they can copy and paste or cl even click the link from the PDF. So, for example, uh, the squaring function, uh, here are the two YouTube links here. This is one from YouTube. This is the bit.ly. Notice all start the same way, but ends in 0, 1, VA, meaning a 0, 1 is the squaring function, vertical, and the A video, not the B video. By the way, it also shows here is the example that's shown, and then this is the now you try one. Example, now you try one. So you can actually have your students look at this list and say, if you can't do this video, then you might want to do this example. Absolute value, again, here are the examples. Here are the now you try ones. Uh, some of them are not um, available just because there is no one for y equals the opposite of the absolute value of x. That's it. That's pretty much it. For the generic piecewise function, the function changes. It's different functions for that but it really helps students understand how to do that because they've never seen this function before. So now let me just go ahead and show you the actual PDF. So this is the actual PDF that you can easily download. You don't need to print it. Just get it on your students' computers or your computers or your colleagues' computers. And this is a list of the parent functions. And then also these are all of the videos of the generic transformations. Um, the linear relations in slope. Uh, the, we have the equation. We figured the parent would be standard form. Uh, we have um, slope intercept. We have point slope. X equals a constant. Y equals a constant. And then combinations of them. Okay, because they're always mixed up in different forms. Uh, we have six videos on slope because that is something we teach almost every year. And this is something you could have your students relearn on, at, at home, not have to spend valuable class time. The four flavors of slope. What does slope mean? How to calculate slope from a graph, slope from a table, how to derive the slope formula, how to calculate using the slope formula, how to draw lines with given slope. Very short videos to help get your students being able to understand that concept. The squaring function, I'm just kind of flip through these here. You can do it again, the absolute value. You can see what just goes on and on, and the students can see exactly which ones they're going to graph and would be able, uh, asked to graph, and which ones do they need to practice, and what are the now you try ones, and so on.
And like I said, here's the linear relations in slope. Okay. Um, notice for the slope videos, we instead of transformations, we have the uh, six little videos on slope. And then we have the parent in quick and then point slope and so on. So let's go ahead and look at just one of the slope videos so you see what I mean by that. So slope, what it means in its four flavors, this is part one of six. Again, you'll need graph paper. So the word slope has many descriptions. It's a number, usually represented with a fraction that tells how slanted a line is. It's described as a rate of change. We say it occurs in what we say are four flavors. Here, all these lines slant uphill from left to right, and we say they have a positive slope. Slant of each line is described with a positive number, usually a fraction. Lines that slant downhill from left to right are said to have a negative slope. Again, I'm going much faster than I do in the video. Horizontal lines have a slope of zero. Zero can be written as a fraction in several different ways, and here's are some examples. This is not one of them, okay? Remember, this is undefined when you divide by zero. So there are three types of numbers, positive, negative, and zero, but there are four different ways lines can slant. We have uphill, downhill, horizontal, and, yes, you said it, vertical. And since we ran out of numbers, the slope of any vertical line is undefined. Some people say, just like dividing by zero is undefined, some people say that vertical lines have no slope. I'd like you to understand both ways. Quick review and self-assessment. Pause and see which lines have those slopes. We're not going to pause. So we can talk through and let the students see that. This is kind of a self-assessment here. Several interpretations for slope. Here are some of them. Vertical change divided by horizontal change. Rise over run. Change in Y divided by change in X. We use some abbreviations so we don't write so much, like the lowercase m. We also use delta instead of the words change in. So we usually write delta y divided by delta x for change in y over change in x. Strongly urge you to write this extended equation in your notes and remember this. Pause to do that. Real world interpretations, rate of change. Here are some examples of rates of change. Miles per hour, dollars per hour, megabits per second. And see if you recognize some of these. PPM parts per million, CFM, cubic feet per minute, and my favorite, GPF, gallons per flush. And here's a summary of slope so far. All right, so again, here's the website that has all the information for both of my presentations, uh, bit.ly forward slash capital M-A-T, from U Alpha Theta 2021 and TR for Tom Reardon. Okay, uh, pause is needed. Uh, these are what's on the family of functions. There's a link to the home page, link to that quick reference guide. Again, a must to download for your students and colleagues. Uh, link to TI's home page. Um, in fact, let me just kind of go there so you can see that. So if you go to this website, you can see right here is this the kind of the title part, but here's the heart of it right here. This is the Family Functions video series side. Uh, these are all links here. Um, and then if you look at my COVID data presentation, this is all the data right here. Um, so you're welcome to watch that video as well or, or take that uh, information. All right, um, please contact me with questions. I hope you have a great conference and I hope this was worthwhile for you. Thank you.